Hi, everybody. This is a basic understanding of cryptocurrency. That's the session today. And within this session, I will be covering only the overall basic scenario and uh, the overall understanding of cryptocurrency. So uh, mostly I'll be talking about how cryptocurrency is with regards to what cryptocurrency is. And then later on trying to understand how as we who are lawyers, who are studying, who are practicing later on, how cryptocurrency in, in the Indian scenario with the legal scenario, how does it fit, fit in? So basically trying to understand how, what is cryptocurrency basically understanding it, what exactly how it further as we as lawyers and um, enforcers and also protectors of law and order in our country. How are we supposed to, how are we going to be working with it? How it affects us? How do we affect it, etc. So moving on, let's uh, start with basic understanding of cryptocurrency. The word itself, crypto and currency. If you say, if you take it separately, you take crypto and one word and currency as the other one. If both can stand alone, have their own meaning. Uh, crypto means something encrypted, something which is not open to the any person or public at large. It is only available and understood by those who have a key to understand a secret message. It's, crypt. it's encrypted. It is locked in. You need a key to understand it. So that's crypto. And you have currency, which is what we understand on a regular basis uh, as money or uh, in the olden times when it started the uh, if you see the precursor to money was barter system where I give you certain things and you give me certain things in exchange for services and goods. So it's a currency, it's an economy. So when you bring it together, it's cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is something that is encrypted and it's still a currency, it's still an economy. So it's an encrypted economy, encrypted economy in today's sense and mostly since the uh, since technology has taken over the human race so it's completely absolutely digital it is a currency an economy which uh, works be which began also in the digital space and is currently working in the digital space it will go on to work only in the digital space which is uh, it stays only and absolutely in uh, electronic mediums systems which are uh, digitally used utilized so that is uh, just a basic understanding of cryptocurrency means something and everything that works on the dig digital space. Now, digital space is something in India for the longest time was not explored. We are people who believe in something that is hard cash. We can see things, we can see the cash, we can understand. So that is our currency. What we understand as currency is something that we can see. It's only in the recent years that the country has gone completely into the understanding of the mind frame of uh, digitalizing our currency is when now uh, people are available and open to the aspect of uh, currency exchange via the internet. That's why we have portals like GPay, UPI, uh, Bhim UPI, and we have bank transactions transactions happening uh, even a regular vegetable vendor or your traveling uh, auto rickshaw or taxi person is now open to taking money via paytm etc so this is a digital modem of giving and receiving money now this entire understanding of the digital scenario of money is also the part of our economy it's not that you, you give electronic uh, money, so you cannot have that in liquidity. You can still have that in liquidity. How? Very simple. Go to an ADM, put in your card, you get your cash out. So though the bank account says 10,000, it doesn't mean that it has more money or less money. It has exactly 10,000 rupees. And how do we get it out? We put in our cash or we put in an application, we get it out. So that's liquidity. Now, this understanding is something which the Indian audience is now comfortable with. Because we have A, the ease of giving and receiving money through our mobile phones or through our computers. So there is a digital transaction happening. B, there is a liquidity happening because if you want the money, we can go and apply for it and get the cash. Now, if switch the entire scenario, put the entire scenario in this entire economy, switch it off from the cash economy. All right, our cash is called FIAC. That's what we call 
So if you want to decipher between what currency we are talking about, we are not talking about fiat currency, which is our Gandhi ji wala currency. That's fiat. We are not talking about that. We are switching that completely, going to into crypto space. Crypto space, digital space. When you go into the digital space and scenario where we are talking about currencies that are working over there. However, now which has come across to us in this blow it has come across like a, it has actually blown up on the scene so much that everybody is not talking about it let's talk about cryptocurrency where do i put my money what do i buy which currency do i go into why do we need so many currencies a question not i think people should be also asking why do we need so many ek bitcoin tha kafi hai na abhi ethereum aa gaya ek saath bhi aa gaya aaj kitne sare aa rahe dogecoin aa gaya name it name it there's somebody coming up with a coin literally and most of them are somehow in the recent years now even indians are picking up and we have brains brilliantly yay for that uh, we are trying to create our own coins ourselves so it's not just the americans or the asians on the other side of asia which is the japanese or the uh, chinese people who consider into all of this not just them it is us indians who are many people out there who are trying to get into this uh, space and and uh, see if they can make some kind of profits out of it now cryptocurrency is since we have already established at the start of the talk that it's something that is encrypted it is encrypted inside a digital base crypto is still in the digital space now on the digital space when you have cryptocurrency now understand it's a economy it's not just coins now cryptocurrency is an economy but like we said at the start it becomes an economy and if you go to the fiat side of the currency you have cash that we get liquidity you have stocks that you can buy you have fds and uh, such kind of instruments where you can save your uh, money for a long time period and then eventually if you wish to get it out you get it out so you have securities you have stocks you have all of these exchange uh, portals available now again flip it over the side you have cryptocurrency you have all of the same things over here the only difference over here is it's all in the digital space now only thing that we don't somehow are comfortable with cryptocurrency is how do we liquidate so much of it whatever it is how do we liquidate it so there are uh, cryptocurrency exchange portals where they liquidate your cryptocurrency that you have gained now now that is if you are uh, sorted with that we can keep that aside we can go back to what is cryptocurrency so now current cryptocurrency is obviously of many types you have coins which are like i just mentioned earlier you have coins which are ethereum bitcoin etc apart from coins you have it utility like when you are in utility tokens utility tokens is if you come back to fiat currency i don't know if you remember this but when we were kids we used to get these coupons so dexo coupons and coupons like we can use them or a voucher or like you know we can use them in places where they accept these uh, coupons and in exchange for them you get certain kind of uh, whatever you want uh, food or groceries or stuff like that like i remember using those coupons for uh, when we used to go to this uh, bazaar uh, the supermarket star bazaar not of the same like they used to uh, accept coupons why because when we have bought the coupons we have given money against it so there is a fiat currency money that has already been paid against a set of coupons you get 100 coupons each coupon is like 10 rupees or something so if you are buying any kind of uh, product using the coupons you are giving that many like you know coupons 1 2 3 how much how many ever to equivalent to the price of the product you are buying flip again this side crypto you have the same thing you have utility coupons you have coupons that will help you buy but it is only in that digital space now understand this is the few drawbacks or the few plus points of crypto is because it's in the digital space it's easier however you have to ex- uh, those coupons will be accepted only in those places where the d- digital space they are accepting coupons Uh, or they are accepting these kind of utility uh, tokens where you can use them and eventually uh, buy your goods and services and whatever you want to go on with you can do that same thing see try understanding cryptocurrency is not alien this idea began in the 1980s 80s is when our parents were still in their old i'm young 20 i'm chill i'm going to not exactly think too much about life stress just i'm just graduated i'm going to enjoy it. 1980s the time when amita bachchan bell bottoms everything was crazy it was fun 
so in 80s the computer just came up in the 1960 so 20 years after the computer 1980s this idea of the digital uh, let's have this encrypted currency or something that i can send through and somebody can get through and it the idea began and it was not exactly worked on because people didn't know exactly how to go about it because the thing about digital space is you can copy paste a lot of things so if you begin with a currency over there how do i regulate it you know it has to everything can be copy pasted how do i regulate how do i control it how do i understand ki if uh, what i'm getting over here is valuable how do you understand value is because you either it is limited few people have hold it and that's why when everybody else wants it the value increases like gold is limited it's a small uh, it's a metal naturally produced we cannot produce it as human beings and it is very limited only few uh, it's a few the gold compared to the other metals is less and its demand is high so when the demand is high and the supply is less the value goes high so same thing when it comes to uh, crypto uh, for this currency if the a uh, currency can be duplicated continuously multiplies then there is no value against it you have to hold it in such a way that the value stays high because the supply is less from 80s it came down to 2008 it's when satoshi nakamoto came up with this white paper on peer to peer currency the bitcoin came about and that's when things started picking up though yes it the boom hit in like post 2018 19 more in 2020 because of the lockdown so it but the thing started in 2008 it already it already started picking up it started rolling out though there was no value to it initially people were still untrained to understand what is cryptocurrency what is this currency that you're talking about and it's peer to peer it's like a torrent everybody's got a movie i can take it from anybody it's like a peer to peer thing so it's somebody they try to understand what it is now with cryptocurrency hitting the boom because 2020 happened and we were all sitting in the house we saved up on the time that we take for travel we saved up on uh, a lot of other uh, unnecessary outings that we do, do sometimes we all are in our house we since we are in our house we are all on the digital space because you're working from the computers we are also getting ourselves entertained through the computers we are also getting ourselves educated through the computers and the internet so the space where everybody was together at one time became absolutely completely digital since it's digital obviously the currency also started working on digital basis a lot more people understood now ki if this is something that is going to be picking up it is something that everybody would want to know so the education for cryptocurrency has also uh, increased that's why we come here now for basics of cryptocurrency now coming back to the digital space again cryptocurrency is something that is still growing 2008 though it began 2018 10 years later it, people started getting it understanding it 2020 the boom hit everybody is into it now you have exchange portals uh, like wazirx and coin coin dcx and there are many other portals over there who are trying to make it comfortable and convenient for people to now not just own a cryptocurrency but to also uh, liquidate the cryptocurrency into the currency fiat that they understand and then from there make a profit and use it for something which is uh, on a day to day basis either they are goods and services or save it and for something which is they have planned for like a property or a marriage or an education you can having said that uh, let's be very clear about one thing since cryptocurrency is still trying to get its way uh, footing in this entire uh, economy of it there is no absolute one value of a particular currency the currency value falls and rises very quickly in seconds again this is in a digital space this is not in irl in real life this is a digital space we are not using this currency against gold like in india when the rupee came out, uh, rupee was a currency is a currency we still use but when the rupee was the entire economy of our country came into our hands from the british raj and at last we could do things and everything so the rbi so if you look at a 10 rupee note a 10 rupee note says i owe so much money against the rbi so in exchange to that if you ask for gold against the currency you could get gold against the currency now the fact that we know we have so much money and it is this valuable is because we have we are comparing it against a particular rare metal that's the reason why we know it that it is valuable to this extent 
when it comes to switch it off and go back to cryptocurrency if you go to cryptocurrency and you try to understand the value of it it is not valued against a rare item or a rare metal it is valued you know the value of cryptocurrency is also rising and decreasing this is something i cannot guarantee give you a clear answer that you know it is valued against so and so so and so don't quote me genuinely don't do not just yet because this is something we all are learning to understand what is the crypto currency matlab uh, how do we value it because if you look at the graphs of cryptocurrency and we are all learning about it and we are all trying to understand how it uh, rolls ki how is it going to be beneficial to anybody because of the valuation against the currency what is the coin going to be valued against for it to be valuable or not valuable so like i said before there is utility then you have the coins which i already mentioned then you have something for uh, security then you have security tokens then you have asset based tokens you have such multiple types of cryptocurrencies which are trying to come up there and be establish themselves in the market so much so that people are also trying to get cryptocurrency in such a way that it attaches to music and to art so you can sell your music or your art as and gain some money out of it convert it into fiat and eventually make money out of it. your own art sitting at home you can produce music put it up on the blockchain blockchain is something like a ledger uh, when we have a, a business then we run a business that we are starting whenever whatever whatever date or however we start we have this ledger where this is our income then you have your expenses and then you have against uh, deducting the expenses from the income then you understand what is your profit if you have made a profit or if you have made a loss so your pnl accounting this all becomes a ledger now this ledger is only with you if you make changes in this ledger it's not like it's going to make changes everywhere else now this is the same logic in a blockchain however the brilliance of crypto is the blockchain is not centralized to one person or to one head or to a centralized area or like the government it is decentralized means every person is uh, in a possession of the workings of crypto and if there's a change in the blockchain it has to be made changes in every person and if the network is a wide network it could be of tens and thousands of people together then you cannot have this are maine idhar choda jhol kar diya to fir usko nikal de don't i don't want it to be sure shown in my accounts and all so let it go we we'll put something else no you can't do that because it is not centralized so it's everybody has an ownership of it everybody knows what's happening so because it is decentralized there is more transparency you can see why where what etc is happening Whereas opposed to uh, where in a fiat currency you can't understand where what is happening. You are not in control of the money. Yes, you own it. Like many people owned five hundred and thousand ka notes in bundles and bundles in their houses, but they were not the owner. मतलब the owner of the currency currency value. The real owner and understand uh, the real holder of power of the currency value was the government. And when the, the government declared these five hundred rupee notes and thousand rupee notes are not going to be valuable anymore, the entire demonetization happened. That's when no matter how much ever money that you held in your hand, it had no value. It was absolutely zero because one man held the power of it, and he said. i'm not going to be keeping the value of this 500 rupee as 500 anymore it is not valuable it is just a piece of paper give it back to us and we had to give it back to them because it was not valuable anymore and it was not in my power no matter how many ever bundles i had of them it was not in my power to hold them anymore i had to give it back to the government so that's why the people going back to banks and giving it back and saying okay fine this is not going to be happening so i'm sorry you will have to keep it now now when this happened is when people are also sitting down and sitting back and questioning ki when i have so much money and i worked so hard for this money why is this money not coming handy and useful to me in fiat then uh, i just put the same fiat digitalized money and that's when i have my money so this whole question comes about right because your currency is there you give it back in the bank you put it in the account on the digital space you are rich but in the real life space you not so this entire question has also now bring about brought about a lot of thoughts ki what if we keep everything only in the digital space 
there are pros and cons for digital space in, in uh, specifically in our country not just only india but also many other countries which are still developing and growing where the digital space the infrastructure is not yet in that at par at the way the currency and the digital space is growing you don't have as many instruments our instruments are computers mobile phones you have uh, from, uh, if you want to mine the crypto then you need those circuit systems there's a lot that goes into it and for all of that you need electricity and you need uh, internet connectivity you need all of that infrastructure which if you do not have or you're not in possession of that infrastructure again you come back to gra ground zero be like what now that is the only drawback of when it comes to cryptocurrency the reason why people who are still believe believers of fiat currency will even if even if they want to invest in the cryptocurrency will go back to saying nahi yaar so convert karte fiat mein rakhte kuch to haath mein rahega that is also scary because again you don't have a centralized uh, decentralized power you have a centralized power of a fiat which if they tomorrow declare not uh, valuable will be again zero valuable in crypto space you can never declare a currency currency to be devalued it is always at a value now the comparison is not against a rare metal that is the only thing and subject that is the reason why it falls and rises again is because demand and supply is what eventually will uh, give it value now the trouble in crypto space is again internet if you have internet clear connection you have the infrastructure for it you can work on crypto but if you come from a country which is very very backward and it is still getting there the infrastructure is yet to get there so you still again again under centralized systems main understanding and main purpose or the uh, main uh, if you see that uh, arjun ka teen uh, in the fish's eye the real actually the real goal is to have a decentralized system that was the basic understanding and goal for crypto is a there is no central power who can come up and say tomorrow you know what this currency is not valid anymore get it out i don't want it so nobody can say that every currency is valid second since it is decentralized you cannot have underhand uh, techniques of no let's just not have this entry let's forget it let's put something else cover it up with something else no you can't do that because this entry is everywhere it's a blockchain that is uh, available to everybody so uh, you have transparency there is uh, definitely no chance of uh, making any kind of uh, underhand deals that we have talk about so there is transparency so when you have these two you have something that is decentralized and when you have something that is absolutely transparent the confidence that you have in the money and the economy is higher when the confidence level is higher youth who are majorly interested in making money uh, will be more on the uh, level of working for a growing uh, system and growing economy as opposed to just hoarding and being i'm like ye mera hai mere paas hi rehna chahiye kisi aur ko not sharing like the zero sharing part goes away so this in in this actually works for increasing and bettering the economy tomorrow that uh, that anybody and everybody will have will have the opportunity to do something better and grow better with regards to the economy space now coming back to now this is you have understood crypto has is in the crypto uh, is in the digital space furthermore crypto is also a currency that is economy based you have a youth and everybody working on the economy now all of this coming together we as lawyers also need to understand we need to understand this social structure of the coming up new race of people uh, human uh, race so that when we make laws and regulations for such an economy how do we work and tackle them because every time there is a law there is something going to go either against it or for it like currently in the us there is a uh, case going on i don't know if you all are following it or not however i i'm uh i'm on and off following it because i need to understand what exactly will be outcome of it is right now the ripple xrp versus the securities of the the usasc securities exchange board they are having a tussle uh, tussle right now the tussle is because they are claiming ripple made lot of money in billions which is illegal money now the only thing is this is come under purview is because there's a lot of money that has come around 
and people are calling it illegal because it did not go through the proper legalized controlled channel of the security exchange and it has gone through this channel where it is decentralized there is no control there is not one person coming up and saying ki like nahi baba this is like this and like this so this is a tussle that is happening and they are trying to understand through the uh, court case ki what is supposed to be done of it so whenever whatever outcome comes of it this actually will be a landmark understanding of how the cryptocurrency space is now going to be affecting regular people regular crowd with regards to money do we uh, do we have the option of now using it as a security like heavy money uh, in the digital space or is it going to be scrapped out completely and we go back to only coins exchanging making a little bit of the side more money and then moving on to life with fiat currency which is again centralized so this judgment actually will be helpful for us to understand with regards to the securities and for other aspects of other currencies the other aspect is taxation india has just come up with this whole 30% tax uh, and everybody is lost their bunkers on it well in india the basic case thing is till something is not taxed we are not exactly sure about how legal or illegal it is you cannot tax something that is illegal the moment something is taxed it is considered to be legal however having that said having said that we have not come up with regulations or regulatory or ordinances or bodies or anything that actually helps us to understand how to we work with the crypto space and cryptocurrency you make a profit there are obviously ways of making that profit look a little bit less because you have expenses and many other ways around it however we need a regulatory body that will take time because the understanding of the crypto space is a lot this is like we are still in our seventh standard trying to understand our uh, uh, subjects and we have been bombarded with uh, standard 15th uh, questions so right now india is in that space we still have to get there to get the digital space and the digital infrastructure working well uh, second we have to also get along the educating uh, education of the mass public at large backdrop be uh, the backdrop of india mass public uh, education is going to be difficult why because we have a multiple languages not everybody speaks the same language everywhere in the country you skip one one state to another state only the rupee stays the same everything else changes name uh, the name of the place the way you write the way you talk the way you dress everything changes it's like an entire continent of europe in one country india so yeah it get, it gets difficult so educating public at large is difficult which once uh, the government actually takes that as a onus on it and works on it and if not the, the government we as what we doing right now where we are educating each other i will be educated by you you will be educated by me it's a given takes a situation so that will encourage more people to understand ki, okay fine we can work on this space and how do we regulate it because it's only when you work on something that you realize are a problem hai i mean i don't like this or how about doing this in a different way that he is not just me and everybody else because this is a problem if one person faces faces it it's not going to be new for the other person the other person is also going to be facing the same trouble like if you have an issue with exchanging it it's not just you it's going to be a lot of other people and when it comes to india a lot of people it's definitely a minimum of 10000 to a lakh population that we are talking about who are going to face trouble so if you want to reduce that trouble so it has to be everywhere educating the people and um, building the infrastructure uh, getting everybody on board the, the infrastructure apart from education getting them on board once they are on board then eventually we can come up with a regulation because people are coming on board all right they are on board now we have to give them some kind of rules and regulations to do this to do not do this and to what to what now again we are in a digital space this is like the internet internet is not only one person or one country internet is the globe except for north korea it just denies to be on the internet for one person watch anyway except for north korea you have the entire the globe on the internet so cryptocurrency again is like similar to the internet it's like a global global currency everybody is going to be on it it's not going to be uh, something that is only specific to a country it's not going to be specific only to a continent uh, so when we come up with regulations how are we going to be dwelling with regulations that is going to be not against another country's uh, law and regulation but not against our own country 
because now as lawyers we'll have to understand we are sovereign body sovereign body is i do my own thing i'm not going to listen to anybody next example right now is russia and ukraine so which is russia trying to be one sovereign who wants to go exercise authority on the other sovereign ukraine and both are not exactly happy about it that that leads to war we in we in war we human regular people are uh, affected by it when sovereign bodies now this is on a, another level sovereign bodies are big countries they when they want to exercise authority on each other is that's when the war happens and war happens it's not fun now imagine the same thing on crypto space if it's on the internet digital space sovereign bodies are fighting each other because of money and currency and because something that is open and available to everybody it is a fight to another level that war will lead to shortage of other things possibility of us gaining any kind of uh, accessibility with regard to assets and for uh, exchanges securities etc so cryptocurrency is a very naive baby stage right now we need to still understand it we need to still learn it basics of understanding cryptocurrency uh, always compare it to your current currency it is not different the only difference is it is decentralized so it's transparent you and i can all see what's happening on the crypto space you and i can all understand what is the value of the money that is going to be uh, value of the currency in it it is not something that is hidden it is never hidden it, it is more out there in the open it's like the internet it is global it is not just one country oriented it is a global thing so it's the entire globe together as one citizen so the whole idea of global citizen that uh, many uh, international organizations are trying to promote is actually uh, working if you look at the cryptocurrency space it's a global uh, economy uh, scenario so these are all good points of it the only backdrop of it is it's digital so if you don't have the infrastructure you're stuck again and uh, with the entire globe uh, uh, globe and many countries in the globe like india facing trouble with the centralized uh, control of uh, our fiat or currency is now causing so much trouble that people are looking forward to this decentralized form of currency where the power is in each individual's hand and not just one government sitting on the top if you see there are many if you get into politics there are so many countries so let's not delve into politics we come back to cryptocurrency itself so basic understanding of cryptocurrency is uh, it's uh, something on the digital space and it's a currency and we are working uh, uh, we are trying to understand and get better knowledge and information and get acquainted to it in a way that will be helpful to everybody at large you have uh, exchange portals available you can buy the currency and you can sell it right now only coins as such are being used of crypto and they are mostly common and famous around uh, whenever you go on the internet um, you have ethereum bitcoin uh, as such uh, they are more common and available when it comes to the utility asset backed and uh, you have the securities crypto they are available however having said that there is a us uh, court case going on to that effect so i will not guarantee that it is something that you should delve into investing or trying to understand with it those part will come eventually when regulations and all we have something for the working of those point type of coin uh, cryptocurrencies coins are something that is now right now available and people are working on the coins more so i just wanted to understand how cryptocurrency works in india and what is it in simple language simple language cryptocurrency works in india like any other currency however we do not like i said before we don't have the infrastructure like um when you go out of india there is a lot of infrastructure where if you want to purchase a service they have this option of pay by card pay by uh, cash or pay by bitcoin so they have a portal where you give your uh, you pay your bitcoin and they will uh, you know accept that and then you can avail of the goods and services india we can't do that so that is the reason why we have this portals called exchange they are exactly like a Bom- bombay stock exchange national stock exchange where stocks value one stock is a value of 10 rupees or 10000 rupees one stock if you sell that stock you get that money in your account and then from that money you can do whatever you want same logic with regards to crypto a particular coin of crypto is equal into so much uh, fiat currency rupees you sell or you buy that uh, crypto you ex- uh, and then that when that money gets a uh, deposit in your account you use that money for whatever you want goods and services so in india it is currently limited only with regards to exchange which is it is only available as uh, with regards to exchange in coins no other way actually you can't because 
abroad they are trying to get there ki you sell your bitcoin against an ethereum or whatever the value difference is going to be it's like dollar to rupees but not exactly dollar to rupees over there just two different kind of type of coins over oh, bitcoin to bitcoin or ethereum to ethereum you buy, you give it they ex- accept it and they you can avail of your goods and services india it is only exchange that okay, i hope i have answered your answer uh, so can a normal uh, person a layman person can invest in crypto yes Uh, so could you be a uh, be precise about the crypto currency rate or if that term exists i'm not sure so th- that's what i said again the valuation is rising and falling at a phenomenal rate however if you want to understand better uh, you may go have to go on the exchange portals you have coin dcx this is one exchange portal then you have wazir x w a z i r x uh, it is uh, ceo founder is an indian nischal shetty he uh, i'm not uh, okay this is not uh, endorsing him or trying to advertise him uh, with regards to crypto he has a lot of information he has this portal called wazirx it's very uh, i mean it's highly informative and you can learn a lot from just listening to him and or going on his twitter account so yeah that guy is brilliant in this area uh, yes i'll do that thank you so much ma'am i have two questions uh, first is regarding the legality Okay. See, ma'am. As per we know, the regular currencies are governed by the government and the la- la- law of the land, basically. Mm. So you have somebody who is actually can track the transactions. Mm. Okay. Mm. In the case of the crypto, this is completely unregulated. Mm. So it can be used to funnel in the funds for like havala and other things. So mm. how to prevent that? Basically, there is no infrastructure. As if I have understood, there is no infrastructure to control such transactions. so in a sense it should be banned right it should not be existing because it is circumventing even local laws see there is a forex law mm-hmm. if i am sending money to somebody in sa- directly via regular currency i am paying mm-hmm. a tax to government which is a good thing mm-hmm. but if i am using cryptos i am bypassing that and even mm-hmm. making a loss to the government mm-hmm. and also in some to myself because i am electing my own government mm-hmm. so right so it's a indirectly a loss to myself Mm. so this is where i think the legality of this is very much into in a dark gray area mm. i don't know this is uh, you cannot say it's a black and white case but also mm. it's a gray mm. area so mm. uh, or also again the government of india is not a muting about lot of things that uh, there there are two opinions about it that one opinion says that directly let's ban the uh, cryptos other mm. party says that you no know, let's regulate it and mm. somebody has come up with a taxation of 30% or so more that so so i want to know what's the current standing about it see the current standing like you have mentioned very clearly that there is no regulating body we do not have a regulating body why because like very clearly you have said and also uh, like i said before this is not something that is centralized it is decentralized and the reason it is decentralized is because we don't want a governing body we don't want somebody to come up and say ki listen tomorrow se ye value nahi hone wala hai aur ye value zyada hone wala hai there is no question going to be in that uh, who is going to do who is going to uh, account for the valuation that is the reason why it is decentralized it is something that everybody will have a little bit of an ownership on it now having said that and having uh, also said that there is no regulatory body currently in that we cannot ban it why we cannot ban it is because then india will be the only country like north korea for internet will be the only country which will not have crypto if if capital if india does not have this cryptocurrency and it is banned in india it will only create a loss for the government at large because all of us around the world is going to be working and dealing in crypto working and dealing in crypto and majorly with all of the mncs having their base in india they will find the india to be a loss making country they will back out from us so our major investments coming through them also will it's a big uh, it's a it's a domino effect you throw one you put one stone down it will domino effect to the entire economy of ours fiat economy inclusive which will be harmful to us so india banning it is not going to happen india having taxed it is only taxed on the profit you make on crypto means if you have money you have or rather you have bought a currency cryptocurrency and you have kept it in your uh, wherever account or howsoever you are giving on a layman term keep it in your account keep it with you store it and you let it be you are not going to be taxed the moment you make a profit of it is so like a particular amount that you have bought and it has reached a particular amount which is a good money uh, exchange value you exchange it you get your money out of it that's when you are going to be taxed on 30% is your tax 
now that is having said that so the government is also making money because the government has taxed you so the government is not losing out okay second you are using it also you will also eventually uh, if you can and indians are smart how to even if the money is taxed how to get it out of the government so if you can explain your expenses then you can also save yourself that way so by that logic and also when it is surviving in india other people in other countries also will be interested all right india is getting somewhere at a regulation it's not got a clear set of like regulation but there is a certain acceptance to the currency so people also will want to invest in india indians can come up with their own coins and put it out there at the in the crypto space and probably make a profit out of it so there'll be other countries who will try to fund people like uh, whoever in india is trying to come up with a crypto coin people can fund so the funding will increase if you look at it it's again a domino effect for a better india as opposed to a negative effect of the falling india so banning it is a very harsh word it's a very harsh uh, step to take forward which the government has not taken forward it is not banned it it is only taxed it it is not completely regulated it so you still have a little uh, free hand over it so let's be honest about it again like i said it is still in a naive stage it is still yet to grow however what you are saying is not wrong you are completely correct it's like in a power in each each person's hand makes it something if you are not regulating it it is like in a mai gunda mai raja everybody is the same it's going to be difficult so yes regulating is needed uh, understanding it, it is needed uh, banning it is very difficult uh, very very difficult honestly we live in a world now like i said before it's a global thing it's no more one country living in their own small pocket area no more you everybody is connected and interconnected so we need each other so banning it is very difficult regulating it is good however it will take time infrastructure is very weak uh, you had just said ki like why it is a decentralized everybody knows the value of it and no coin can actually be uh, you know suddenly said it's a zero value but mm-hmm. then the my question comes is just if you have observed last two days terra luna has actually lost complete value mm-hmm. it has been scrapped completely so what yeah. about that basically so that's what i said now because it's decentralized it's on demand and supply so there is no demand there is no supply against it so now they have scrapped it together it's not one person who has said okay let's scrap the damn thing together everybody there was no demand for it so there was no one requiring it you know so, so that's the only plus point about such things because if they come and they go it's not like you know they come and they go because one centralized authority said nahi yaar nikal lo it is because the people at large the persons at large the people who are involved in it are also not wanting it if you're not asking for it not require like let's go back to the old fiat understanding we used to use copper as a coin exchange value once upon a time even cordy i mean like nuts and this were used shells were used as a currency value eventually it just died off because people did not want any more as nuts and shells and copper as their currency value we prefer our gold we would rather keep gold as a currency value and silver as a currency value which has somehow stayed throughout time and stood the test of time that is also important coins come and go but the coins who stand the test of time test of time means demand we people we talking about mere ko chahiye demand when dem- it stands the test of time that coin survives coin does not survive it does not uh, if it does not stand the test of time means demand is not there so that is only a good point about crypto you don't have one person saying nahi chahiye you have a multiple number of people saying nahi chahiye okay so in a short right now even the crypto space is going to the bears and bulls stage yes yes that told you it's a very baby stage it's a very nascent stage it's a very uh, like we still learning baby steps we still trying to understand ki like chale bhage daude baithe kya kare dekhenge like it's going on slowly During the government speech about crypto, they uh-huh. mentioned about e rupee, a new blockchain coin. Uh-huh. What are your thoughts on it? Will it be a stable coin? And if it is, could it be a legal tender? Since India is coming up with this e rupee coin, which they are putting it up on the chain, one thing I'm happy. Yeah, India is getting out there. <laughs> second thing uh, will it be a stable coin will it uh, be an exchange coin i don't know i am hoping it will be a stable coin because we indians love to do our fts and love our shares and things that we can store we love storage absolutely we love storage there's always this one room or one place in the house where storeroom hai 
we like to store things even if we don't want to use them we like to store things so yes i am hoping and under, according to what our mentality as indians and we i me myself also i'm not i'm not zeroing or excluding myself i'm including myself too i am also a hoarder yes i like to hoard so i'm hoping it's going to be a stable coin because we like stability we like our fds and a stable coin is something that we can uh, store you can actually make a lot of and we can store them up and use them at a good rainy day you know if not on a rainy day we can use them eventually little by little and you know, exchange them uh, in fiat currency and use them so i'm hoping it will be a stable coin however if having said that it can be also an exchange coin and i'm for it anything and everything when it comes to indian e currency coming out there e rupee coming out there e how do we find out that the wallet company is genuine e wallet company are genuine e wallet company are genuine the only way you can find out is baba reviews because that's how uh, these companies survive e wallets are something that you put your uh, money in on the digital space and if it is not been given back to you or rather they take that money and disappear those e wallets can be only understood through uh, the comments and the reviews available on the digital space because there is no other way of finding out anything apart from the digital space more so because people like commenting and re- giving reviews good and bad bad more so good is very rare they are available bad more so on uh, the digital space so if you have more bad reviews against a wallet company then baba i choose not to go into it uh, personally uh, when it comes to any of this spaces regardless of how good or bad the wallet is point uh, the company is point is how is your experience with the uh, in internet and how is your experience of keeping money in wallets apart from your bank accounts is it comfortable with you great if it's not comfortable with you then do not delve into it at all if you are comfortable go into the reviews of a particular wallet and then work around it uh, personally i have not tried any wallet as such not that i'm not comfortable it's just i've never thought about it. my concluding remarks is the same thing which i said before uh, i'm just repeating it just to give a nice closing end ki crypto is a space that is in the nascent stage we are working on it we are studying learning understanding nobody is an expert and everybody is an expert at the same time because jitna aata hai kal ja ke aur aayega seekhne jitne like i know enough is something i can never say i will always be learning something new trying to understand something new trying to understand uh, how it works how it doesn't work things are going to always be like coming up more more developed uh, more refined and so we will always be learning so crypto space is something you have to be very humble and hold yourself down and say ki nahi i don't know everything i'm still learning it because since it's a space where there is no centralized authority it's decentralized literally everybody is the boss and everybody is the gunda so yes we are all learning little little everybody is understanding little little whole understanding of crypto space is not something that is scary it is actually beneficial it is more honest because it is transparent is the reason why it is going to it is always going to be in there out there it is never going to disappear coming generation wants a little bit more of a transparent authentic honest uh, system as opposed to the archaic understanding of uh, red tapeism or anything of that we don't want fascists anymore we want somebody we want people we can talk to easily we want uh work to happen comfortably we want to live in a space that we don't have to be in fear ki yaar kuch jhol nahi hona chahiye like you just questioned and asked me how do you know the authenticity of a wallet nobody wants that anymore we don't want that or do i have to go and search if it is authentic or it is not authentic is it going to cheat me is it not going to cheat me no we all want to be feeling in a safe space so crypto is somehow almost not completely there still there getting there in a space, safe space people are working on the safe space so i'm hoping that crypto uh, is the safe space for everybody of us with regards to money eventually assets and aage uh, jaake apna whatever ownership of things and later on economy and uh, at a whole so everybody is their own boss when it comes to crypto let's take baby steps and understand better one day at a time thank you so much for having me